Remember the first assumption of linear regression. We gotta have a linear relationship. Now, this sounds fairly obvious since it's called linear regression. And a lot of the time we actually do have a more or less linear relationship. But there are also other uh, situations, and it will happen to you, where we encounter nonlinear relationships. Um, the two most common relationships, or I would argue the two most common relationships are, well, quadratic relationships, for example, with a parabolic shape or a U shape that looks something like this, and an exponential um, relationships, for example. So they might look something like this. Okay, so this is an exponential relationship. Um, well, the quadratic relationship with the parabolic shape, the U-shape, this is something you would encounter if you try to measure the relationship between age and the activity of people. Participation in the workforce, for example. Well, old people are not participating in the workforce and young people are not participating in the workforce. And the exponential relationship, I would say this is something you would encounter in um, economic time series quite quite a bit. And also there are quadratic relationships that are the ships that don't have the parabolic shape and so on. There are quite a lot of relation, non-linear relationships. So what we could do is we could fit a line onto each of those, but that would make a lot of sense. So we could fit a line that goes straight through here and a line that goes through here. Okay, so um, this wouldn't make a lot of sense. The coefficient of determination we would get back would be way too low. Now, um, it would not capture the entire relationship, but we want to model the entire relationship. But how do we do this? Well, it's, it's actually not that hard. Um, we simply have to transform our data. If there's only one variable that causes problems, you might want to transform this variable. So let's take a simple example. Say you're interested in cumulative medical expenditure of people in a city. You get a sample from the archives of a certain health administration. So, for example, you've got a sample of 18 people with records of their age and their cumulative medical expenditures at time t. And so our dependent variable, so our dependent variable would be cumulative, oops, cumulative medical expenditure and we want to explain this with the variable uh, with the independent variable h okay now these are our variables and our intuition says that the older someone is the higher are his cumulative medical expenditures so you draw a scatter plot and it looks something like this so you take uh, these two variables you draw a scatter plot with h as your independent variable and medical expenditure as your dependent variable. And your relationship might look something like this. Okay, I know these are not 18 people, but uh, you get the point. So um, this looks like an exponential relationship. Well, the first thing you do is let's let's fit a curve, okay? So the curve might look something like this. Um, and we also get a model that says medical costs are equal to, medical costs are equal to a constant plus b to one times h plus an error term. Okay, now it also gives you back an r squared that is equal to 0.653 uh, and your findings are also significant well i would argue that there is much more we have not not yet accounted for so let's transform our data by looking at our data i see that medical costs are exploding while h is uh, while h increases so the variable medical costs is causing us trouble so i look up a linear transformation method on the internet by the way i will put in a link into the description and I see that, that a good way to transform an exponential model is to take the logarithm. So let's do this. Our model would then look like this. So our transformed model would look something like this. So the log of medical costs is equal to a constant alpha plus beta one times h 
plus an error term. Um, if we put that in uh, to R, it gives us back an R squared. Uh, so with the same simulated data I've, I've used for uh, this model, it would give us back an R squared of um, 0.984. Well, it looks like we've got ourselves a pretty neat model. Um, if we draw this model onto a scatter plot, it would look something like this. So let's draw the scatter plot for our transformed model. So I'm drawing the scatter plot for this right here. And it would look like this. So have a look. You see, we've transformed our data and we made it linear. So now we can fit in a straight line. Perfect. And um, now you might say, great, now we have the logarithm of medical costs, but I'm interested in the actual medical costs and how do, uh, costs and how do I interpret the coefficient? Well, the log part is fairly simple. If we transform something, we simply have to back transform it in order to get the real result. So, for example, the model might tell you um, the following equation. So, the equation for this model is the log of the medical expenditures is equal to 4.8 plus 0.1015 times h plus an error term, okay? So this is the model. And so if the if h increases by one year, the log value of the medical cost increases by 0.1015. Um, so let's take a 40 years old for, as an example. So the log of medical expenditures, of course, hat, because this is what we're uh, actually forecasting, is equal to 4.8 plus 0.1015 times 48. And this is equal to, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, this is equal to 9.67. So the log for the medical expenditures uh, for the 40, 40 years old is 9.67. Now that doesn't tell us anything. What we have to do is to back, is back transform um, uh, our data. So um, since I was taking the natural logarithm, the way to back transform my data would be equal to e. So this is the exponential function. If you're not familiar with logarithms, you might want to check out a video on this. Uh, it's not that complicated, but uh, to back transform the log, we have to take the, uh, the uh, exponential function and raise it to the power of our regression equation. So, so this is equal to 4.8 plus 0.1015 times h and we put in 48 in there and that would then be equal to so if you put in 48 there that would be equal to 15,975.73 okay so it seems like a pretty good fit. Now, there could also be another underlying relationship. Let's say, for example, that medical, medical costs are quadratic. In this case, what we would do is take the square root of medical costs instead, instead of taking the logarithm. So maybe, the, maybe medical costs are not exponential but quadratic. Then the transformation would look something like this. We would simply take the square root of the medical costs and then put in the equation okay um you all already know um and there are many many more but there's also another group of nonlinear models um these are used when you have to take the logarithm on both sides so it could happen that you have to use the logarithm on the dependent and the independent variable for example if you encounter a power model to transform a power model you'd have to take the log of the dependent and independent variable and simply the best way is just play with your data. Take advantage of the logarithms and the square root if, um, if your data is not linear. Most of the time in social and economic history, when we're dealing with nonlinear relationships, the log or the square root will do just fine. 
But how do we interpret the equations? If you take logs, it's a bit tricky to understand the regression equation. The thing to take away is that we are not talking that we are now talking about proportional. So we are now talking about proportional rather than absolute change. Since medical costs were measured in logs, the coefficient for age tells us that if we'd increase age, so let's take our log uh, uh, equation. So let's take this log equation again. Okay, so this right here tells us that um, if we would increase age by one year, the medical costs would increase by B times 100 percent. So if we would increase age by one year, so B times 100, so B is 0.1015, um, this would be equal to 10.15 percent so if we would increase um so let's so in our example it says that if we'd increase age by one year medical costs will rise by 10.15 percent but what if the what if it's the other way around for example um let's take another example that says y is equal to a constant plus b to one times the log of a variable and an error term. Now then um, the beta 1 coefficient would tell us that if we would increase x by 1%, so if we would increase x by 1%, y would change by b divided by 100 units. If both variables are measured in logs, so if it's like log x equals a constant plus log, oh, sorry. So plus b to one log x and an error term. Um, then it would say that um, if both, both variables are measured in logs, it would tell us that if we change x by 1%, um, y would change by b to 1%. You see, it's a bit difficult, so I wouldn't even advise you to learn that. Unless you're a mathematician uh, or a statistician, um, there's no need to have to, to remember this. Um, just look it up when you have to transform your data and you want to interpret it. Um, the important thing to learn is if there is no linear relationship in your data, you can transform it. Um, you could transform both the dependent in and the independent variables. There are great tables on the internet um, you can use if you want to transform your data and that would make it, make it much easier to understand and to actually um, transform your data.